If I could write a recipe for a perfect day on the trail, it would be something like this. Two legendary off-road YouTubers who've been massive influences on my channel. Two diehard friends to join us on the trail. Four incredibly capable off-road rigs, all built very differently. One world-class epic trail in Utah, and a sprinkle of crazy weather. Mix all these together during Easter Jeep Safari in Moab, and this is what you'll come up with. Yes! This is just what I was hoping for coming out to Moab. Like, look at these rock formations. I mean, I've been out here in the Moab area before, but I've never got to explore something like this. It feels like we're at the base of a spaceship or something. We just landed. It's, it's, the scale is so massive. It's like otherworldly. So I'm here with uh, Brad from Chow Recon, uh, Sean from Storytale Now, my buddy Lance and his Broco Raptor. And we're just airing down, getting ready to hit the trail. And I cannot wait to see what this place has in store. So Sean, uh, tell me about this trail that we're going on today. So this trail is called Behind the Reef. And the reef is uh, just kind of all these rocks are kind of sticking up out of the ground, I guess. Yeah. Behind anyway, the, the point is we're going behind it and it's beautiful. And uh, we're gonna go see what's out there. Easy, hard, medium? I, I'd say like easy to medium, but very scenic. Awesome. So there's a little gatekeeper obstacle at the beginning. It's probably like the, the biggest challenge that we'll face. Well, thanks for taking us out here, man. I can't wait. Well, thanks for coming out here with me, man. I can't wait to be out here with you. Oh! <laughs> uh, hey, Brad, so uh, have you been out here before to the San Rafael Swell? I have never been out here. I've heard about this place, but uh, I'm excited to uh, go explore it. Well, Sean says it's, he said medium to easy with a gig. Yeah, you can't trust what he says. <laughs> his, his easy is everybody's medium. And so if we're at a medium trail, well, we'll see how it goes. All right, Sean, Sean we'll be, we'll be uh, rating your rating system. Well, I like this, guys. I'm not seeing a bunch of Jeeps out here, so I think that's a good omen. Dude, I love those rock formations over there. Yeah, so that's the San Rafael Swell, and we're gonna get to go, like, right behind that. I mean, seriously, they, they had to have filmed an episode of Star Trek or something out here. This totally looks like a different planet. Yeah, that's what I love about Utah. It just doesn't seem real. Not sure if you guys heard that, but I just put the Raptor in off-road exhaust mode. Sorry, didn't hear it, man. Mine's in that mode all the time. Brad? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you over my Magnaflow exhaust. The trail was winding us around, getting closer to the rock walls of the canyon, where we'd come in contact with the first obstacle we'd need to pass. So we're just climbing along this ledge, and honestly, it's a little more technical than I expected. And you can see it's just, I don't know, just some rocks in there, it doesn't look too bad. Of course, it never looks as hard on camera, but it's not like we're not crawling over rocks or anything. But it's a pretty there's it's pretty yeah, tight. And camera on the ground, real and quick. It's, it's a little more sketchy than I thought it was gonna be. It's a shelf road. There's I don't know maybe 500 foot drop uh, below us with woohoo -hoo, Bradley with uh, you know rocks on either side, and so sometimes you are hitting rocks that you can't really see because you, it's hard to see the edge of the road and it's the trail itself is so kind of up and down that uh can be really hard to see kind of like what's coming so it's like hidden almost like hidden obstacles this little gatekeeper wasn't anything too bad but i'd be lying if i said i didn't have a few pucker moments when it got narrow soon enough though we were through the other side and ready to see what else the reef had to show us Oh, look at this. This is just awesome already. Dude, what a view. Dude, it's snowing. Crazy. Where did it even come from? The clouds. Two things I didn't expect coming to Easter Jeep Safari. Empty trail. The snow caught us off guard, but as it fell out of a partly sunny sky, it totally changed the vibe of the trail. Suddenly we went from open skies and vistas to something a little more subdued and introspective as the views became almost misty with snow. Not only was there something new and awe-inspiring to see around each bend, 
but now we had no idea what to expect from the skies above us as well. That tan rock over on that red plateau looks like a little UFO. Eventually we came to a point where everything was so good, we decided to take an extra few minutes to take it all in. What do you guys think about stopping here and uh, hanging out for a few minutes, taking a break? Sounds good to me. So we just stopped to take in the surroundings here and oh my gosh, look at this place. So we've got these hoodoos, the red rocks, you've got these just massive rock formations everywhere and it makes you wonder like how this stuff was formed like and just the geography of this place is so impressive. It's so fun to see and it feels really special to be out here because no one else is out here right now. Easter Jeep Safari is happening back in Moab which is wonderful and we're out here where no one else is, is hanging out and it's just just really cool. I'm really glad I came out on this trip with Sean and Brad and get to see this stuff and hang out with them a little bit. So we're just going to have a little bite, maybe take in the scenery a bit, chat, and then hit the trail again. I heard maybe there's some mines or something up here that we might go check out, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, this is just so fun, so great that whatever we do next is going to be great. The blue skies were back and we were excited to see if we could find that old cabin ahead. Every corner we go around is amazing. Doesn't suck. It's moments like these that remind me why I love being on the trail so much. No streaming service can beat the beauty and entertainment of seeing things like this with good people. Sit around and watch the tube, but nothing's on. I change the channels for I see cabin. So we just stopped at this old cabin, and it's so weird to think that. All the way out here, somebody built a cabin for some reason, probably for mining. That's generally what these cabins were for, but who knows? It's all! Oh, I thought I, I'm so, so, finally I get a spoon. Finally I get a spoon from Sean after all this time. Yeah, if you want some of the other cutlery, just let me know. I think there's some, I think there's some spoons in that cabin. A lot of this stuff is for mining, but we are way, way out here in a really harsh environment. And so, it's just really neat. Let's go see what's inside. The cabin felt old, but not that old. Maybe something that lasted until the 1940s or 50s. It was uranium mines like this one that were critical to the covert Manhattan Project that led to the building of the first atomic bomb and the ending of World War II. Who knew that what was once considered a waste product would become a central ingredient in the arms race and the Cold War that followed? So we've been walking around trying to kind of put together history here and figure out how these structures were holding up and how they fell down and all the time kind of looking for the mine and we just heard Brad call out that he found it. So we're gonna walk over here, hopefully not step on any rattlesnakes, and uh, go take a look at what was a mine. So this is something, maybe it's filled in, or maybe it was never a mine. It could just be a cave. There's like a wire hanging from the top though. Could have been used for something like a cook pot, or I don't know. So when I look at this stuff, it like gives a little glimpse into how some of these bigger rock formations were formed, like over time. It's like I'm in this drainage and you can see like the dirt has been swept away by wind or water and it's brushing off the soil from these rock formations and it's really cool you know i don't i'm not a geologist i don't know how this stuff works but i can imagine it being down here just looking at how this part of this drainage is forming bigger rocks and maybe someday long in the future these will become monoliths like we're seeing above us on the rock walls at the top of the hill was an old truck of some sort even though Sean, Brad, Lance, and I are all truck enthusiasts, no one could figure out what kind of rig it used to be. If you have a guess, put it in the comments. I'd love to hear it. In any case, it was pretty cool to see this old rig. Cabin stop complete. We were back on the trail and ready to see what was next. The Baja mode just changed like everything about the suspension, the, the whole thing. Dude, I thought you said there was going to be some views in this trip. Wow. I'll be interested to see what this turns into. We snaked our way through some small washes, but couldn't quite see where we were headed next. But somehow, we all knew it wouldn't be disappointing. Like the diversity of this trail, the scenery, like this is a smash hit right here. This is a trail that I dream of. As we approached a ridge, we got one of those only in Utah type vistas. And it wouldn't be the last one on this trip either. That is just awesome right there.
So we're up on this little ridge and it's just incredible. You can just see for, I don't know, maybe 60 miles or something across the valley floor. And there's all these weather patterns that are just dropping precip on the mountains all around the valley. It's just spectacular. I feel like we lucked out with this trail and this weather right now. I know that Sean had been out on part of it, but not all of it. So like what we're driving right now is new to all of us. We're all just kind of marveling at it. Now it's nice to drive these trails with no like gear, you know, just like a lightweight rig, not lugging people or a bunch of stuff around. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I agree 100%. I'm totally into this ultra light kind of rock landing stuff. I imagine your Broncos eats this stuff up. I'm back here itching to go 70. This loop is a lot longer than I thought. We're not even halfway done. Yeah, I was noticing we got a ways to go. As we finished driving through the high meadows of the reef, the trail started to climb again, and we started wondering what we'd see at the top. The trail changes a lot. That's, I, I really like that it's got a lot of different vibes to it. That is one of the most incredible views I've ever seen. It's pretty awesome. It looks like I'm looking out over the plains of Africa in front of us here. Uh, that's Pride Rock down there. Do we want to go to the right and see if there's a lookout point or something? I think the answer is yeah, let's do it. We were driving on the bridge, and there's this little road that went to the right and we were like should we go see where it goes or should we keep driving and of course we were like let's go see where it goes and it came up to this lookout that is just jaw-dropping I mean, it's just incredible so we just had to stop and take some pictures and get out of the rigs and walk around and just like appreciate this view in, in this area so anyway i'm so glad we took that road and stopped to take a look so we also found this fire pit and there is what looks like an old shock that was burned and put in the fire pit, which is not cool. So I'm just gonna take this home and find a proper place to dispose it so it's not left out here. So, you know, whenever we can find stuff like this, just pick it up, throw it away, keep it off the trail. Okay, so the, uh, the route back to the trail we're on, to the right. I like how it says, most difficult, I'm in. So we're about to drive down this, what looks like a drainage, and it's, it's getting pretty rough. And it reminded me that when we turned off on this road, it said, uh, this is a black diamond or like the hardest of hard kind of trail. And uh, we were all like, yeah, that sounds great. We're gonna do this. And uh, it's, it has not been hard at all. Now this is starting to look interesting. I got a feeling this wash is gonna be pretty interesting. I like the sound of that. The trek down to the bottom of the wash was scenic, a little rocky, but overall not much of a challenge for the four rigs on this trip. And while we were all hoping for a little challenge, we weren't disappointed that the trail wasn't more technical. We'd hit those trails later in the week. However, when we got to the bottom, the trail completely changed once again, and we found ourselves in the narrows of a canyon. It's uh, a lot like the Anza Borrego Desert right here. That's exactly what it was reminding me of. Makes me want to go out to the Anza Borrego Desert. Come on out, dude, you gotta see it. little bit of a squeeze here. Well, that was a little tight. I was actually hoping that we would have something that was kind of tight and squeezed us through. And, uh, you know, the trucks had a little bit more problem getting through because they're so long. The 22 had no problems whatsoever. Like the, the, uh, the Bronco though, it had some issues because it was, it's wide. It's as wide as a Humvee. So we got it through, but there was, it had about an inch and a half of space on, on one of those corners. So that was a ton of fun. And everybody got through unscathed. There was an easy line to the left, and I think uh, we're not taking the easy line. How's it look? Easy. <laughs> I don't even remember seeing this road when we uh, came down here. This must have just looked like a wash or something.
do love that Ford front end. Looks really cool. Yeah, it's one thing they nailed. You land that was booty full. We made it all the way to like golden hour. Uh, easily the greatest trail I've ever done in my entire life. That's awesome, man. I'm glad you enjoy it. As we neared the end, we were all thinking the same thing. We do that again. That was awesome. This is, a, this is an epic day. This will go down in the record book. Wow, what a great adventure. What a great trail. I'm so glad Sean took us on this. It was fun driving and hanging with everybody in the convoy today. We had a great time. And the views and the oh, there's some technical spots. It seems like the, the trail had like 17 different parts to it. Like everyone felt way different than, than the one before. And around every corner there's an epic view, blah, 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 it was great. So now I'm just going to air up using the Kraken system. And then we're gonna go out to dinner and probably just talk about how awesome this trail was and then uh, do it all again tomorrow. So thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.